Hi there, it's Ingus from IGS Electronics and today we are going to cover a uh, inverter drive which is manufactured by Dumfos and uh, this particular uh, drive comes from their micro drive family. This drive is uh, the one we are going to be working on today is a single to three phase drive which converts single phase into three phase to run obviously the three phase motor and uh, we're gonna go into detail to see how the drive performs how it works is it good or is it not and uh, i will not go too much into detail regarding wiring up the motor and things like that as those things were covered in the last couple of other videos but uh, first things what we need to do is identify what sort of cables do we need to uh, be able to wire this drive in into the power source in the first place. So uh, let's have a look at the label and see what we need. Right now that we are looking at a table, it says down there that we need are going to be running this uh, driver at uh, 1.5 kilowatt, two horsepower, and uh, 202 240 volts supply with 18 amps required. So. I would put that on a 20 amp uh, separate fuse uh, with a 4 mil cable depending on your distance. You, Before you go into these cables you must understand that where, how cables are calculated and things like that. I might cover that one day but not at this time. So uh, uh, output will be uh, 6.8 amps, obviously it's a lot lower because it's output in 3 phases. So only it requires a lot smaller cable. But supply, you must, must, must start, stick to the uh, drives and manufacturer's guideline, guidances. And uh, uh, even though you think you're not going to drive, uh, run the drive at such a high ampage, uh, the risk there is too much to take. So stick to manufacturer's guidances and uh, uh, select correct cable and correct wiring. Now that we identified what we need to get this thing going, uh, let's crack on. Okay, to talk about a little bit more about these drives, Dunfoss itself is manufacturing drives uh, pretty, pretty good quality, and uh, they have been uh, a to be quite reliable drives and run for years and years to come. I've I've seen in many drives in many machines that they they they're twenty up to twenty five years old. And, and still sound and, and no problem with them and uh, the quality itself uh, I can't knock it, they're pretty pretty good and well established company uh, usually when you buy these drives, this front keypad you see on that that one, there's two types of them and a drive usually comes without one obviously this one, is it, it has one and it is for sale with one as well so uh, we'll be using this one without a potentiometer. There's one with the potentiometer and there's one we don't have the potentiometer. So we're going to be running this into min in a minute into a uh, local run and then see how it runs, how, how it reacts to the motor and things like that. I'm using a 13 amp plug because I'm not going to put any load onto a drive. So I'm kind of into the safe side. So it's only for the testing purposes. So I'm quite happy to uh, run it as it is so uh, let's power this thing up and see what it sounds like and uh, what it looks like and try to get into the menu a little bit okay before we go ahead with the basic uh, parameters let's have a quick look at uh, wiring so this is where your uh, uh, single phase supply would go in and then right down here this is where your three phase supply would go to your motor and as this is a single phase uh, drive, you need to make sure, let me just lift the camera, make sure your uh, motor uh, little plates are set up like so. So now that we have looked at a quick wiring, and uh, let's power it up. So drive powers up, as you notice there's a, there is a fan into this drive, so Danfoss has uh, looked at the uh, need of the fan in there, so uh, that's something to consider if you don't like the uh, fan noises and things like that, this might not be for you, but in most cases it's really doesn't bother most of the people. 
So as everything is powered up now, we need uh, you need to go through your uh, menu. Uh, and I'll quickly run through you because the uh, first thing you can do if you click on a menu sign in there and press OK, it will enter you into so what they call the, the basic setup. Uh, and then, and then, and as this video is only for the basic things, this is pretty much what, all we're going to cover because uh, if you want to go more into a depth of the parameters and things like that, I doubt you will need to watch this video to help you out because uh, uh, then it becomes quite complicated and then these videos could run for ages to go through all those parameters. So the basic setup is as we start is going to tell you please select what sort of motor are you using. I am using 0.37 kilowatt uh, uh, dual voltage uh, uh, um, motor which this drive as it is, is designed more or less to run 1.5 uh, kilowatt uh, motors it really lets you go down to select to, as you can see, 0.75. That's as, that's as low as you can uh, really go. So uh, in this case, we're just going to stick to the lowest point. But uh, if you buy a smaller drive, then make sure you tell the drive what sort of motor are you going to be running. Uh, the next setting it tells you what on what voltage you are going to be running uh, your motor. Generally, it's 230 volts. Uh, if it is single phase and if it's three phase, obviously it's going to be a 415. The next one, it tells you what uh, what hertz the motors are running. Obviously, in UK, we have 50 hertz. And then uh, it's going to ask you to set uh, the motor amps. So definitely do that. Make sure these amps are set correct according to motor data plate. And uh, what to look on the motor data plate? You can see some other videos I made about. Uh, uh, the basic understanding of a single three phase inverse it'll tell you what sort of amperage you need to select the next one is uh, RPM don't usually touch that it will automatically select because this is the four pole motor uh, it will uh, straight away gonna add out of 1420 RPM and uh, that you, you don't really usually need to touch and, uh, and uh, obviously there's other pole motors but uh, which are do a two pole, four pole, six and eight and probably others as well, I'm not sure but today we are using four pole motor which is running an RPM of, of uh, 1420 don't need to touch that and the next one is don't really need to do that and then we go into the what they, what they call a uh, uh, setup Three. In the setup three, what's it what like setup group three? And you go straight into your uh, uh, minimum reference. This is your minimum reference, and then you can tell your maximum reference. And why would he offer you that? This is if you want to run a drive, let's say, when I mean you press on and off and you want that to straight go to 20, start from 20 rather than ramping up to, to, to that point you can select and start at 20 so you can if you want to change something always press OK, it will start flashing and then just do whatever you want to do whatever you need to set up but we don't want to change that, we're quite happy with that so this is your, uh, it says what you what should be your maximum what you run at, obviously this can go higher than 50 if you check that uh, it comes with complications, not always, now there's a general rule I have noticed in the industry that uh, if you do sometimes want to run the motor higher RPM uh, you can, uh, manufacturers don't really like it because the motors are sort of designed to run on uh, uh, set um, uh, what they call the RPM and basically the, the argument is the, the bearings and all other bits that's inside and there on a higher speed might fail so uh, be aware of that but I have spoken to several manufacturers and their general rule or how they usually come back to and say they don't mind to go the motor above 25% extra they don't like, uh, they, don't like uh, they, they say more or less it will handle so if you do need it let's say try not to but if you do need it you can but take it on your own risk because that could damage motor and all other parameters it will change because of the as higher uh, uh, hertz you will run the amps and volts and everything like that will change so there is all sorts of things if you don't understand it don't touch it 
The next one is your uh, acceleration time. At the moment we are sitting on 3 seconds. So again, how fast it ramps up. Next one is deacceleration, how fast it ramps down. And uh, next one we are back to, this, uh, the, 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 to the main screen. So pretty much that is it for your basic setup. So uh, it doesn't really... Uh, if you are going to run mills, lays or, or whatever, you don't need any fancy dancy things, that will be plenty for this drive to run. As we all have not uh, uh, selected any of the... Uh, we're not going to use any uh, remote modes today, not in this video, because that would, that would just take too long. Today we're just going to cover the local mode, and uh, to get out of it, just click the menu again, and again, and you will leave the menu. But if you do want to go in more detail, set up, just click the menu, and you see, uh, and click the menu again. As you can see down there, it says, what group would you like to go in and play with the parameters? Use your, this would come with sort of manual like that, and in each one of those manuals, like this is sort of what I call the uh, quick guide. And, uh, as it says, it's quick guide. It doesn't really give you a lot of explanation. What does what, and and so on. If you do want to get into more depth and things like, that, don't go for quick guide. Go for the full manual. You can download from uh, Downfall's website, or there's pretty much a lot of companies who sell these drives. You can download straight from them. And obviously, you can go all the groups. And once you selected the group, just select you want to go in there, and then it can go through the parameters. We're not going to do that, so we don't need that. So. This is it. This is this is now that we have selected, set up the motor, uh, all the necessary parameters. What we are happy with, and uh, the one good part, a good thing about this drive is, you can jump here or by clicking this. You can jump straight onto these uh, points down there, what they the, what they call the I/O po uh, points to run with the buttons and things like that. But we're not going to do that today, so we're gonna not going to use that. So we go back to the mode down there so basically to put draw start the drive on in here off is in here so that now we can change quick because we don't have a little to put on time we can change the reference point from the up and down button which is automatically there already as soon as you go for local mode it will automatically use those buttons for reference point and uh other than that, I think I covered the most, and let's let's start up and see what it sounds like. As you can see now, the machine says it's on, but it's not spinning. Yeah, so we need because our reference starting point is zero. So it's a bit of a lengthy time to ramp it up by hand. That would be very annoying to me. So I would use some sort of tantrometer, which you're gonna cover the next video. So that's the maximum. Whatever reason it goes to 50.3, don't know why, but this is what it pretty much sound like, and uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, you can stop on that. Then obviously start up again. It will remember what was the last reference. So uh, I'm not sure what it does in a power down. Does it save it or not? But if you wanna like, let's go down a little bit to the bottom. Uh, 30. My general rule I always have, I don't like running drives below 30 Hertz. It's just, it's just, it just messes with the motor too much. Uh, if I do need to drive, go lower than 30 Hertz, I'd like to add a gearbox to it, which will give me the desired speed. So let's just stop it and see if he saves that. It should. Right about. Yeah. So it always saves what you have done. So uh, pretty much uh, with that we can uh, can pretty much just stop that. Uh, with that said, uh, that should be enough to cover this drive in a, more or less in a local mode. In the next video, we will have a look at it. Uh, what can we do and how can we wire in some buttons and uh, potentiometer and maybe play some. Uh, preset references and things like that and see some basic things that we can do again we're not going into the superb detail about all the fancy dancy stuff this drive has because it does have really good functions in there but that's for I think for more complicated machineries and things like that and 
that is uh, that's something I uh, there's no need for me to cover. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.